Hey there Dev Squad Vertus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 Mech Combat tutorial series. Within today's video, we're going to be finalizing our level. So what we're going to be doing is fixing any collision issues that we have with our environment. We're going to be doing a little bit of post-processing and we're also going to be changing the character just a tiny bit in the blueprint to make it respond well with the environment. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive straight into it. So so the major issue that we're having in the level at the moment is going to be collision related. So having said that, if I go in my scene and try and run up to these rocks and these trees, I am able to go straight through those. So what I'm going to do is, because those trees and those rocks have actually got collision already, all I'm going to do with these is simply select them in my foliage mode. I'm going to select the assets, we've only got five that we're using here. But if you are using more than asset, more than five assets, you're going to have to do this for each of these. But essentially, with each of these assets, all I'm going to do is go to the details panel for each of these. And then I'm going to change the collision preset from no collision to block all. And I'm going to go through and do this for each and every single asset that I've got here within my scene. And as you can see, that is working really, really well. So to see that it's working really well, all you need to do is just jump into your scene by pressing play and then if we try run up to a rock as you can see here we are not able to go through this now one issue that we might run into is going to be our trees we are not able to get all the way up to the base of our trees and that's just because of the way the collision is set up so what we're going to do to counter that is essentially select our trees let's start with this one here we're going to show it in our content browser open it and then if we go to view our collision from the simple collision you can see exactly why we're not able to walk up to the base because the collision expands outside of where it should be so what we're going to do is essentially just automatically generate collision instead so go to collision at the top and then press auto convex collision and then just with the default settings press apply and what this is going to do is generate more realistic collision for this tree and as you can see here it is going to be very tight to the branches if we was to go ahead and press play and then if I was to run up to one of these trees, what you're going to see now is we can actually go all the way up to the base. We still need to do the same thing for the other tree. So once again, show it in the content browser, open it up and then for the collision, auto convex collision, press apply and then just show your simple collision just to make sure that that is all good. A simple collision is going to be what has been provided from the auto convex and it should look just like that. So if that's all good, if we jump into our scene now, doesn't matter what asset we're walking up to, we are not going to have any issues, whether it be a tree, a rock or a like. Now, if you do have assets in your player base or anything else, you might want to go through and check the collision on a one by one basis with that. All you need to do is simply select the asset and then with that asset all you're going to do is simply change the collision to block all. So for example these pieces in our base all I'm doing is setting block all to all of these. Now by default the collision on these are going to be pretty good so you haven't really got to worry about it but if you've got your own stuff then definitely take a look into it. Now one thing that you will notice is that the player you are going to be able to make him go a little bit into the walls a little bit into the trees and that is just because of an issue that we've got in our third person and blueprint character and that is to do with the capsule height and the capsule radius not being thick enough so go to your blueprints folder and open up your third person character and i'm going to show you exactly what i'm talking about go to your viewport tab and as you can see here we have got this capsule component now this capsule component is what is going to actually determine the collision for this player. Now because it's too small you are essentially going to be able to go through objects with collision with anything that's outside of that capsule. So with that selected you can select it in the top left hand corner if you set your half height to a higher number just like that and then increase the radius so it's nice and wide to actually cover the entire character you are going to get better results. Now one thing I do want to mention is that your capsule 
the bottom of it should be the very start for the mesh. So if your mesh is slightly above it, make sure your mesh's feet are right on the ground. Otherwise, you are going to get the appearance that your model for this character is actually floating. Now, if we go ahead and try walk into this wall and get it to clip through, because the mesh and the capsule is set up the correct way, we are not going to be able to go through this. So now we just have a little bit more realism in terms of the collision. So that's pretty much everything collision that I wanted to go over. Just go through each of your assets. But for now, I'm at a pretty happy place. Now, the last thing that I wanted to change in my environment was simply just the post processing. Because at the moment, it just looks a little bit too light, a little bit too weird. So what I'm going to do is simply use a post processing volume to add a little bit more depth and a little bit more atmosphere. So so having said that, what we're going to do is go to the volumes tab underneath our place mode and we are going to be using the post processing volume. Drag this into your scene here and then for the scale, we are going to set this to 100 by 100 by 100 to make it nice and big so it covers the entire level. Now once we've done this, we're going to be doing a couple of things. The first thing is we're going to be doing a little bit of color grading underneath the global tab to give this an orange tint to give it a let sort of sinister look. So we're going to select our gain. So we're going to enable that. And then with this, what we're going to be doing is pushing this over to the orange side. So it looks a little bit like that. Now, once we've done that, what we're also going to be doing is going over to the lens tab, go to image effects, and then we are going to turn on our vignette intensity. And we're actually just going to turn this up and it's going to give us that dark edge around the screen. So now what it is going to do is we have an environment that is a little bit more orange. It sort of fits with the scene and the style really well. And there's a lot of focus on the center of the screen from that vignette. Now, there is a lot more that you could do in terms of post-processing for this game, but you guys, can, you know, you're completely up to do that however you want. That is pretty much everything I wanted to cover for the level for now. We've got a very solid game, and what we're going to be doing is moving on to user interface. That is everything for this video. Once again, thanks for watching. Stay awesome. Keep creating. Your boy Virtus. Signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.